Hi everybody, what's going on? You're watching The Sit Down, I'm DJ Sixsmith. Orange is the New Black is back, and oh boy, Belina Bobadilla is going to have quite a role in there. Good to meet yeah, you. Yeah, good you? to meet you. Thank you for having me. I'm great. Seems like it's a pretty good time in your life right now. Lots of good things going on. Yeah. Um, I think if I compared this moment in time to like a year or even like a year and a half ago, I wouldn't believe myself mm. if I was telling myself this story. So um, yeah, I'm just, I'm really grateful and uh, excited to see what's next. So why don't we start there? What was life for you like a year and a half ago? <laughs> Oh, it was sad. Cue mm. the violins. No. <laughs> um, you know, I was living in L.A. I, I'm from L.A., mm -hmm. born and raised, and um, I, I don't have much to complain about. Um, I have a great family and a, a loving partner. Um, but, you know, when it came to the acting stuff, it was not moving as quickly as I would like to. I think um, one of the things that a lot of people tell actors is to have patience. Mm. and. I don't have patience. Easier said than done. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, you just keep plugging away, and I saw that there was a little opening um, in the industry in terms of these really exciting conversations around diversity and inclusion, totally. and what storytelling would look like if there was more people of color, LGBTQ folks in front of the camera and also behind the camera, and um, those are, are the kind of projects that I always really wanted to be a part of. Um, shedding light on stories that you don't really hear a lot about. But um, it was just audition, audition, audition. Um, I come from a background in theater, mm -hmm. so I was doing a great play at the Mark Taper Forum. And then there was just like a lull, and I literally remember, um, I was like, I gotta get out of LA, I gotta go camping. Mm -hmm. my, oh wow, I, This everything. is new, actually, this is new. Like my boyfriend's really into wilderness stuff, mm -hmm. so we went to the Sequoias and it was, kind of meditative mm. and I was like you know what um, I'm always gonna act I'm always gonna continue doing this and when it happens it'll be the right moment but I can't I can't live frustrated no. uh, you know and, and feel like I'm lacking something um, and something just kind of twisted uh, or it's not twisted but it just shifted and um, this uh, opportunity to audition for one of my favorite shows of all time came about and my manager called me and he was like, I can't imagine anyone else doing this. Mm. Like, you're so right for it. Um, I don't know, but I guess the casting folks and producers thought the same thing, which I'm very grateful to them for. Um, so fast forward to, to that, just, it started happening. I was flying I, to New York, next thing I knew I was like back and forth um, from like October of last year to March. Mm. And it was just surreal, literally like being on that set, I would walk around and be like, is this real life? <laughs> like, what is really happening <laughs> right now? I'm in Litchfield, so mm. yeah. So it was really a life changer in a lot of different ways. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it, you know, there's, there's all these things that we talk about in, term, in the industry, like how you think of uh, roles scaffolding mm -hmm. themselves. So co-star, guest star, recurring, series regular, series lead, you know? And so I was like, wow, it's gonna take me a few years. Like, who knows when I'll be um, a recurring character, right. especially on this huge show, this huge award-winning show that's really been such a juggernaut for Netflix. And I think really set the tone for the whole like binge watching oh, yeah. movement, you it know? It was right at the forefront of Exactly, that. absolutely. Um, so that was unexpected. I, I had no idea how many episodes I was going to do at the beginning. And then um, it ended up being, uh, well, I don't want to give away the exact number right. now because I want people to watch. And then. But you got a bunch of episodes yeah, in here. Yeah, a lot. More than <laughs> I expected. And I'm very happy about that. That's awesome. So what was the reality like? Because you'd been a big fan. You binge watched yeah. it. Then you're on the set. What were some surprising things that you picked up along the way? Um, let's see. Well, everything was shot in one big studio, like one big warehouse studio, and uh, there's multiple sets, so, you know, it's a soundstage. Uh, so walking into the area that was Litchfield, as we know it, which is the prison mm -hmm. uh, where most of the women are at, was really, it's just kind of crazy to see because of course there's no, you know, it's not an enclosed right. prison, so Litchfield ends here or up there because I'm, <laughs> I'm petite. Um, and then it's like all this, you know, the, the lighting and the wiring. And so that was really interesting. Um, but I was also kind of geeking out on really small things like walking to my dressing room and then seeing, you know, the names of the different characters mm. like Piper, Flaca, Crazy Eyes, and like, and there's my dressing room. And you know I had to nerd out and 
take a few pictures. Do, yeah. Haven't posted anything yet, but it's for my baby book. <laughs> yeah, for the scrapbook. <laughs> That'll be a good one. Yeah. Definitely. So thinking about your character, what was it like getting into the role of Santos? And without giving everything yeah. away, how did you develop that character? Um, so Santos is a character that I think her story uh, really resonates the experience of many, many, many thousands of immigrant women mm -hmm. that have the, the perilous journey to come to the United States for, you know, quote unquote, a better life. And we always say that, but what does that mean? Really, uh, sometimes it's survival. Mm. Um, it can be to, to stay alive, to keep their family alive, uh, to work, to feed oneself, um, to preserve your own dignity and health. And so anything under the sun that really, uh, you know, th that migrants have to um, survive in order to get here, I think I really, um, I stand in solidarity and I respect. And so Santos is a woman who journeys from Guatemala right. and she has a really perilous journey um, getting to the United States. And I don't want to give that away because I think it's really worth watching. And I think the writers and producers did an amazing job of humanizing her um, with, with dignity and with um, really paying attention to detail to the, to the small moments. And um, so she finds herself in New York. I mean, she came from a, a, a small town, a really small town in Guatemala. And now she's in New York, but she's in a detention center. And the conditions there um, you know, are not humane as many people now I know have uh, caught wind of what's going on with the detention centers uh, along the border. And not just along the border, they kind of are popping up. Right, all uh, over the place. All over the place. Yeah. I know there's some he here in, mm -hmm. in, you know, in the boroughs. So um, I think, you know, once she's there, it's very difficult for her to communicate with people. And there's women there from Egypt, uh, from different parts of Africa, from India, from El Salvador, from Mexico. And so really the tie that binds them is their their otherness, mm. right? Their, them being not seen as Americans or as full humans, and you see that in the way that um, the guards and the, the prison uh, kind of leadership uh, treats them. So um, you'll get to know a little bit about her struggle during the show, and then um, I don't know if this is a, a, a show or, or maybe it's just a season that has like that ties things up with neat little bows. Mm. I think there's um, some bright moments, but also I was even left frustrated. But that's the reality of, of these stories. And yeah. you were frustrated just because there wasn't a bow on those no, stories? No, not. I don't I actually don't like happy endings. It's, mm. it's too neat, too cute. <laughs> I like to keep too it easy. Pretty, yeah, too yeah. easy. Um, but I think at the end of the day, so getting into that character was an honor and I took mm. it as a really uh, like a sacred responsibility yeah. because I am Latina, um, I am the daughter of immigrants, my parents came from Mexico and their circumstances thankfully were very different um, than what Santos had to go through but in terms of being part of that same community and I you know I'm a brown woman yeah. that's something that you know if I'm walking around in a certain place and I don't have an ID people could very easily you know from ICE or CBP come up to me and assume that I'm undocumented and whatnot, clearly just because of my appearance. So there's an automatic solidarity there. And I think that getting into the role was really, um, it was so exciting and challenging as an actor, but separately there was this persistent layer of like, just heartbreak mm. because I got to take the clothes off at the end of the day and wipe my face. But my community, my brothers and sisters that are in detention centers are still living that reality. So I just hope that um, this in some way um, sheds even more light on, on the reality that um, this community is facing. Well, I think that's been one of the best parts of the show is just yeah. shedding light on stories and women that we didn't see in a main right. way. And this story, especially with your character, is so timely given right. what's going on. And even for you, like, you only have one season to do this. Like, this is the yeah. end of the show. Right. So I'm sure it's difficult for you because you're like, I want to make this character cut through. And you've seen the other women on the show. Like, show, they've had yeah. multiple seasons to build this out. You really have to make your impact in only a few episodes. Exactly. And uh, the writers were very helpful with that mm. because I uh, I would joke that I felt like I was crying most of the times on w that I was on yeah, set. Yeah. No one made me cry. It was, you know, what the, the character had to go through. And it was really emotionally daunting and... Uh, 
there was layers of work that I, I did to kind of prepare myself for that, but uh, they really packed it in uh, with Santos's storyline. So, you know, she gets introduced slowly mm -hmm. in a, the first two episodes that you see me in. So people might be like, oh, okay, cool, this check the box, right, this new girl's character. from Great. Guatemala, yep. okay. And then suddenly there's like <laughs> this <laughs> swerve and, and you see me in a precarious situation mm. and I think, uh, I hope other people cry and it gut punches them because it gut punched me. I'm, I'm sure as, people will be crying. Yeah, I've cried watching the show, so you've, you've cried watching the show. Yeah. Yes, that's what we want. Absolutely. We want people to laugh and be happy, but cry. Please cry a lot. <laughs> 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 but cry and then take action. Absolutely. So, yeah. So what were the different levels of work that went into preparing, like you were just mentioning before? Um, my process in becoming a sad girl. <laughs> mm, yeah. Um, well, I always, you know, at foundationally, I start with my, my technique mm -hmm. um, as an actor and, and the different uh, types of acting and, and, and training that I've received in the craft. Um, but also, I, I layered a little bit of really just like reconnecting with um, stories that of, of immigrant women and stories that I have been... Uh, an advocate around, um, but I just really delve deeper. Um, for example, there was uh, a young woman, uh, I believe she was 18 or 19, mm -hmm. she was from Guatemala, and uh, Claudia Gonzalez, she was killed by uh, Border Patrol mm. in 2018. And I remember that story really hit me because, um, you know, she was crossing the border to meet the love of her life, mm. and he lived in Boston. And so um, I just, reconnected with that and, and I don't want to trivialize it by saying you know I used her tragedy for this but um, really it's it was a reminder to keep me rooted in why this story was so important and why more of these stories need to be told and not just that but why the situation itself needs to be rectified no question about it yeah. and it seems like little America follows in that theme too and Apple is gonna be a really interesting place yeah. for TV going forward so what can you tell us about that? How did that come together? Yeah, oh my gosh, I would love to tell you so much, but I know <laughs> that, you know. Because when's uh, it coming? <laughs> in the fall. In the fall. Yes, TBD. Apple says in the fall. Gotcha. So, um, soon, because I can't believe we're already almost in August. Mm. Um, so, Little America was amazing. Um, it was produced by some of the people that I look up to and I couldn't wait to work with once I saw their work. So. Alan Yang, who's mm. one of the creators, yep. uh, along with Aziz Ansari mm. of Master of None, um, Camille Nanjani yep. um, from The Big Sick, and, and um, he co-wrote it with Emily, his wife, and uh, and there's some other great producers that are the tied to this, but I mention them specifically because they are also immigrants or children of immigrants right. themselves, yeah. and, and the work that I've seen of theirs that kind of uh, tackles this, does it in a really beautiful and almost like a light comedic way you know if you look at master of none or the big sick it it they really gracefully um and so it's done so well kind of show this portrait of what it's like to kind of not live between two worlds but really embrace all the multicultural and multi-ethnic uh, elements of your life that you know that happen when you are um a child of immigrants living in the u.s and you're American, and but you are also very, you know, Indian. You're also very Mexican, so etc. Um, so I thought that that was uh, nicely done and brought in. And I also got to work with an amazing uh, director. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to name her, so I'm not gonna <laughs> name her. I'm like literally, I don't know what I'm allowed to say and not say. But but somebody you've looked up to. But for someone a while. I've looked up to, and uh, and she is a woman of color and. Um, like I said, I think it's really important not to just show uh, diverse faces in front of the screen, but I think the people that create the stories uh, also have to have a personal connection to them, and I think that's when we get more authenticity and, uh, and nuance. Um, but it's an anthology series, yeah. so every episode is gonna be connected to a different immigrant family, and um, if you just you know search online, I don't know if you, you watched with, anticipation uh, that day a few months ago when Apple had like their huge star the rollout, studded yeah, yeah. rollout and uh, you know like the big black uh, curtains behind and then you had like Oprah mm. walking out <laughs> or Camille Nanjani yeah, yeah. to talk about this show um, and we were actually shooting uh, out here 
while when I was they did going the out. Oh, cool. So I was like in my hotel room looking at lines, and then I got on Twitter and I was like, oh my God, it's happening right now. So I had to watch it live, and I was like, he's talking about <laughs> me. Not me only, like hundreds of other sure, actors. Sure, but, but a big moment. But I yeah. get to be a part of that, so it's. It's really amazing. Yeah. Definitely. And it's such a cool moment, too, because there are so many more faces that people can connect with, right? Exactly. So it's not just white faces anymore. It's it's brown faces that people can connect with. And, and I'm sure for you growing up, like, there weren't as many things like this to even look at. So no. what were some of the things you were looking at early on in your life to say, like, okay, this yeah. is somebody I admire, this is somebody I like here? Right. Um, so I grew up, as far as I can remember, really being so excited about media, like, film and television and musicals. I remember my aunts were really into musicals, mm. so when I would go visit them, we would watch West Side Story and we would watch like The Sound of Music, so I got into that element. And of course, I loved West Side Story and I think, you know, no shade on Natalie Wood, but but yes, shade on brown facing, mm. you know? Yeah. Because Natalie Wood is not Latina and right. she played a Latina. Right. Um, but I, I think I kind of went around her and I went straight to Anita, uh, played by the queen, mm. you know, Rita Moreno. Mm -hmm. And I think that was really at that time, um, you know, when I was a kid, and I wasn't a kid when it was made, obviously, but like this was like, you know, in the 90s, like I couldn't, s I didn't see anyone else that looked like that. Um, and then like I love TV. I, I remember loving Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Mm. Such a good show. Oh my God. All time so great show. Good. So good. And I think, um, I really, I, I gravitated to the comedies. Um, so, also, I'm, I loved Save by the Bell. Mm, and another I great show. I was like really excited when, because I knew Mario Lopez was Latino. Right. I'm like, bro, you look like my cousin. That's I my guy. You, okay. Yeah. Why is his name Slater? Why is mm. his name AC Slater? And then they covered that yeah. on an episode, right. uh, which was great. And then they did this college episode where he was like identifying as a Chicano, and I was mm. like, okay. <laughs> Here we Mario. go. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but you're right. There was no Disney princesses. Yep. There was nothing on TGIF or um, really no no movies coming out with with anyone that I could resonate with. And I think you know then like Salma Hayek started mm, getting into right. the mix. Um, and I always thought she was wonderful. But the the programming that I I did kind of have a peripheral um, exposure to was novelas and. Mm. I really wasn't a fan because even there, no one looked like me because right. there is this issue that exists everywhere on the planet of colorism. So, like, we can talk about diversity, but even when you get down to groups like Latinos who are so diverse within themselves, it's really not pushing the boundaries if you still only see Latinx people who are lighter skinned, right. who have European features, who are not indigenous or African, or they're not Afro Latinas. So, I think that um, I really haven't started seeing that happen until, you know, within the past 10 years or less. Yeah, it's been know? pretty recent, right? Yeah. Like Vita obviously is yeah. a big show with that, but Absolutely. yeah, it took that long. But that being said, given where things were in the 90s to where they are today, like oh, it is really yes. encouraging to see more and more people are getting these opportunities and kids are going to be able to say like, yeah, I can be a Disney princess no matter exactly. what the color of my skin is, you know? Yes. And I'm so, so happy that like now we're gonna get a new Little Mermaid and Halle yeah. Bailey. Like, I I grew up loving those Absolutely. cartoons, you know. But then now as an adult, I'm, I was starting to to think like, well, is it healthy for me? Like, let's say I have a little girl, is mm -hmm. it gonna be healthy for me to to show her all of these uh, images of people that don't look like her, and they're the only ones who are being uplifted and right. called beautiful? But she gets to watch The Little Mermaid now, and I get to be really happy. Absolutely. I'm not pregnant or having a baby by next year. You <laughs> no, know? But, but just something in the future. Just thinking in the future, yeah. 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 Or, or just like any little girl, Absolutely. you know? Um, because it would be nice. It, uh, it would have been nice, you know, to, sure. to see a princess that had a nose like me mm. and skin like me and thicker hair. And so um, I'm glad that this new generation uh, slowly gets to start having that um, empowerment. Definitely, and yeah. we got a new West Side Story coming out with I Spielberg know. also. And in the high, yeah. there's so many things, yes. And for you as a theater head too, to have those as um, well, I'm sure you're psyched. Yes, I'm so psyched. Like, I was actually uh, living in New York when In the Heights was mm. still on Broadway. And 
uh, they had the lotto system. Right, so, right. you know, that's when you show up at like 3 or 4 p.m. and you put your name on the list and then at 5 p.m. they call like 20 people and you get to buy your ticket for 10 bucks or 20 it's bucks. It's an amazing thing. And you sit yeah. in the front row. And I don't know why people don't like sitting in the front row. I love it. Yeah, you get to you, be right yes, there. Yeah. You see the sweat beads, you see the makeup <laughs> ones, you know, you see like the, the, uh, the wig line. Mm -hmm. Like, it's exciting. So I think I saw it five or six times, wow. maybe. And I went to see it in LA when Lynn Manuel mm. was playing Snavi, and I geeked out and went to the stage door and I talked to him. So I'm hoping I have a full circle Lynn Manuel moment. Yeah, there you go. Point. Well, you were an early Lynn Manuel person. This yes. is pre Hamilton, obviously. Exactly. So you got to be like, listen, Lynn, hook yeah. me up, man. Whatever exactly. you got next, I'm in. That's right. <laughs> exactly. So you heard it. Thank you. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it, it's an exciting time, but I think that the work is not done, no. you know? And I think that we do have shows that are amazing, like I, I have to shout out Pose yeah, on yeah. FX, because I think that when it comes to really, really um, uplifting uh, women of color, trans women, the LGBTQ community, and really celebrating them within themselves, not just in proximity to what they feel like with a with a white lead mm -hmm. character, um, I think that's really important too because you get to see them as whole humans and and their story's enough. You know, it's valid. So. Definitely, and also yeah. like that show getting Emmy love now, like that takes it to the next yeah. level. And again, just being totally. a part of the mainstream conversation, not exactly. just a show that you could potentially see, but like it cuts through. There's right. new leads, and we're gonna give it an Emmy nomination. Love. Yeah, exactly, and. And I want to get more shows like, um, I have to say, I, I love Sandra Oh. Mm. Like, she's a dream uh, co-star yeah, yeah. for me. I think I've, I've loved her since she was Christina Yang on Grey's Anatomy. Um, but I love that on Killing Eve now, like, she is this powerful uh, Korean woman. Uh, she's Korean-Canadian. Mm -hmm. And um, she, she does her job. You know, she has this really amazing, gritty dynamic uh, with Eve, uh, the serial killer. And and the the storyline isn't hinged on her Koreanness, her otherness. She stands in her truth, but it's not like that's the only way we can see her because she's so different. So I I want to see more of that, you know. Definitely. So and that's um, what you're doing with all your work and, too. Uh, yeah, I hope to be part of more of that. Yeah, no yeah. question about it. Well, Melina, great to meet you. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming Thank in. Thanks for having me. Orange is the new black on Netflix right now. That's Melina. I'm DJ. Yes. We'll see you next time here on the Sit Down.